In the dawn of time, value subcompact sedans roamed the land. Most of them had four doors, four wheels, air conditioning, and hopefully a radio. Life was simple back then, and everyone was content. Then one day, the MG5 Alpha arrived. It had a larger body, awesome tech, and more power than everyone else. Now all of these strengths helped cement the MG5 Alpha as a top contender in the realm. But with the arrival of newer and more powerful rivals in the segment, can this MG5 Alpha still compete? Well guys, time for us to find out. Let's do this. Hello guys, I'm Reagan and welcome to another car review. If you're new to my channel, I want you to click that subscribe button for your regular dose of Philippine automotive content. If you're my subscriber already, well, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. But first, click that like button. Also, special thanks to MG Philippines for providing the MG5 Alpha to do this review. It's been three years already since 2019 uh, when the MG5 Alpha first stepped into Philippine shores and despite being three years old in the market already, this MG5 Alpha can still keep up with the newer offerings coming from other car makers. Now this top spec MG5 Alpha also offers a tremendous value because it's priced at 938,888 Philippine pesos only. Now that, my friends, explains why this MG5 Alpha still remains quite popular. However, the front fascia of this vehicle is starting to show its age already. Uh, with other newer offerings from other car brands updating their look to make them look more modern and sleeker, well, this MG5's uh, front fascia uh, looks a little bit on the conservative side. In fact, it has a front grille here that kind of reminds me of the offerings from VW China, like the VW La Vida, uh, which is just natural, guys, because both MG and VW have a relationship with Saic of China. Now, this top spec MG5 Alpha also comes with a full LED lighting system here, uh, pretty similar to the other newer offerings out there, like the Honda City or the Nissan Almera. Uh, but guys, mind you, both of those cars are pretty new. I mean, they're like less than a year old. While this MG5 Alpha is already three years in the market. I mean, talk about being ahead of its time, yeah? One of the advantages of having an overall larger size and dimension uh, is the fact that we get better proportions for the side profile. In fact, this MG5 Alpha kind of looks like a compact sedan already. Uh, despite being priced as a subcompact. Now this top spec MG5 Alpha gets power folding side mirrors here with LED turn signals as well as regulation size 16 inch alloy wheels wrapped in 55 series tires. Now behind those wheels we get four wheel disc brakes which is something that the other car makers, uh, especially those coming from Japan, can uh, take a page from uh, especially since most of them still use drum brakes for the rear. Now the suspension bits of this MG5 Alpha though uh, still remains on the budget side because we get a Mac person set up in the front and a torsion beam at the back. The rear end of the MG5 Alpha is uh, just like any typical subcompact sedan rear end 
which is kind of borderline bland already, uh, especially when you compare it to the newer offerings from other car makers. I mean, sure, it gets LED taillights here, plus this chrome strip in the middle that connects the two taillights. Uh, but yeah, the overall look of this rear end uh, just doesn't inspire me. Anyway, guys, when you pop open the trunk, though, you do get a decently sized 512 liters of cargo space here, which is good enough for one, two, medium-sized luggage. I mean, it is pretty spacious, guys. Now, underneath this uh, trunk floor, uh, we do get a donut spare tire there. And uh, this trunk area also has a tiny quirk, which I notice, uh, because the back seat can uh, fold down, uh, but it doesn't split fold, guys. Uh, it only unifolds. So yeah, if you're transporting larger or longer items, well, you'll have to do some proper passenger management because that, um, that unifolding back seat uh, kind of detracts uh, in the versatility of this MG5 Alpha. The MG5 Alpha may not be the most expensive vehicle in its category, but it comes with one of the most potent engines in its class. You see, what we have here is a 1.5-liter four-cylinder gasoline motor uh, that pumps out 113 horsepower and 150 newton meters of torque. It also comes equipped with a CVT that drives the front wheels. Now, guys, this power output is the third most powerful uh, in the segment, uh, tailing only the all-new Honda City and the Power Champ which is the Volkswagen La Vida. Now, as for the fuel consumption of the MG5 Alpha, well, I did get some pretty decent figures. City drives netted me 9.8 kilometers per liter, while a highway run gave me 17 kilometers per liter. Now, mind you guys, both of those runs were done with a full load of passengers. Well, I had, like, we were five in the car. So, yeah, it's not really the best out there. Uh, but, guys, it's pretty darn good. The MG5 Alpha has a few quirks that you have to live with, uh, which might confuse some people at first, uh, but once you get the hang of it, then it's pretty much intuitive. Now, the first quirk I notice is the actual key fob itself. You see, the MG5 Alpha is a value subcompact sedan, so I kind of expected that it's just going to have a regular key. And it does, see, as you can see, it has a switchblade key here. But then when I first stepped into the vehicle, uh, that's when I noticed that it also has an engine push start system. So I kind of found it weird that we have an actual switchblade key here. And we also have an engine push start button. So yeah, maybe this um, actual key is for just opening the doors if ever the key fob runs out of battery. I, I don't know. But anyway, guys. The second quirk that I discovered here is the climate control system. You see, the climate control is baked into the infotainment system and it's controlled by only a single master control knob right there in the center. Now this master control knob controls the volume, the fan speed, and the temperature setting of your climate control setup. You see, the default setting, guys, is the volume knob. So you just use it to adjust the volume of your, of your infotainment system. Uh, but when you press the blower button here on the left side, then it becomes the knob for adjusting fan speed. You press this again and the temperature icon lights up, then it becomes the, the knob to adjust your climate control temperature. So yes, guys, it is quirky and it takes some getting used to, uh, but once you're used to it, guys, well, you'll be right as day. Now, as for the, yeah, the rest of the cabin, guys, well, this has a pretty straightforward Euro vibe to it because it's just mostly uh, business blacks and silvers here. However, this top-spec MG5 Alpha comes with black uh, faux leather seats here. I do believe these are faux leather seats, uh, but the, both the front seats gets power adjustment. Now, the steering wheel is also wrapped in leather, and uh, 
it also just adjusts for a tilt though see yeah, it doesn't really telescope so yeah that's a bit of a bummer for taller drivers than myself now as for the info uh, the safety bits of this mg5 alpha as you can see on your screen guys well it has a decent set of uh, safety bits although it is lacking uh, driver assist aids which the newer contenders from other car makers are already offering now i do believe that uh, driver assist aids would likely make its way to the second generation mg5 alpha so we'll just have to wait and see now as for the the instrument gauge cluster here well it is starting to show its age because we, we get a tiny colored multi information display in the middle with all of the vital vehicle information uh, but the layout is all analog now mind you guys this mg5 alpha though uh, comes with an engine temperature gauge which is something that the other yeah the other subcompact sedans can learn from now when you move over to the infotainment system we do get a large 10 inch touchscreen infotainment system here which is equipped with apple carplay android auto and the image of a 360 degree view camera with 3d mode and with a blind spot option now other niceties here guys include an electronic park brake with an auto hold feature plus a couple of cup holders which i will subject to my 600 ml clean canteen test as you can see guys this mg5 alpha easily passes on my clean canteen test now other uh, other stuff that we get here guys well uh, we do get a center armrest and we also have a regular size sunroof here which yeah it's um, it's something that i already you know I, I already expect from these vehicles sourced from china the back seat of the mg5 alpha feels like the back seat of a compact sedan you see we get a good amount of space here you can put three average adults here and all three of us will be comfortable now i'm five foot six guys and this is my driving position here as you can see i get a good amount of leg room i get around seven eight inches of leg room here and my headroom is decent enough at four inches however guys for the amenities here at the back well it is a little bit lacking uh, we do get a couple of USB charge ports here, although we don't get AC vents and we also don't have a center armrest here. Now, the fact that we don't get rear AC vents means that, uh, yeah, during a hot summer drive, uh, the backseat passengers uh, might get a little bit toasty. Alright guys, so we are now driving the MG5 Alpha and I have been driving this vehicle for a week now and one of the things I've noticed with this vehicle is that it has a good level of thrust uh, especially when you compare it to the other contenders in its category. I mean we've got 113 horsepower on tap here uh, but the CVT has a little bit of a delay uh, especially coming from standstill it kind of feels like the the delay that you'd expect from let's say a dual clutch transmission but this is a cvt uh, but once that cvt belts get into the proper ratio then it just goes and goes and goes as what we're doing now see we got a good amount of uh, acceleration here uh, something that yeah it's something that you wouldn't really expect from a value subcompact sedan but we have that here in the mg5 now as for the insulation and the nvh of this thing well i can say with confidence guys that the nvh of the mg5 is not really as good as let's say some of the newer offerings out there like let's say the glm grand i mean if you're just going around like driving around the village or the city and you're just keeping it uh, you know, at uh, slow speeds uh, then uh, the cabin is pretty well insulated 
but once you go over let's say 80 kilometers per hour then that's where the wind noise uh, some of the highway noise also makes its way into the cabin uh, it's not the most refined uh, cabin out there it's uh, it's it feels sportier in fact which I do believe is a part of the MG's yeah, like theme for this MG5 because it does feel like a sporty drive uh, but if you're looking for something more premium something a little bit quieter uh, yeah then this MG5 is not really the best contender out there now when we move over to the steering feel of this vehicle well it surprised me guys I mean we have a hefty steering wheel here this is an electric power assist system guys and I am just on the normal uh, mode for the uh, steering system and you got a dynamic a normal and I think another mode forgot what it is but yeah I'm just in normal mode and the, the steering wheel is surprisingly hefty and it's also pretty sharp see the response is quite good uh, in fact it simulates a hydraulic system uh, better than other like other contenders out there the response is very sharp guys and it's not the experience that I've had with uh, some of the crossovers of MG you see I've, uh, did, I've done a review of the MG ZS Trophy and I'm not really too happy with its steering response and the steering feel but this MG5 this MG5 is much, much better in terms of feel and response uh, than the ZS Trophy. However, there is one quirk again in this uh, steering system. And uh, it has a good amount of heft at slow speeds. But when you go up to triple digit speeds, guys, like 110, 120 kilometers per hour, I did notice that the steering feel lightened up. And I find that that's the opposite of what it should do. I mean, usually when you're going at speed, at highway speed, uh, that's when the steering feel should uh, stiffen up because you'll need a bit more control when you're going fast. But with this MG5 Alpha, yeah, at, at triple digit speeds, the steering system was lighter. So it didn't really inspire much confidence uh, especially when you're driving at high speed oh, of course some of you out there will argue with me that uh, Reagan you're not even supposed to go over a hundred that's the speed limit but of course there are times when you have to like do an overtake maneuver when you go a little bit above speed limit and then you take it back down and yeah the steering feel uh, can uh, yeah can give you some um, yeah some heebie-jeebies <laughs> because it is on the light side at speed but when you're just going around like what we're doing now at slow speeds guys feeling is good hefty and the steering response also really sharp now as for the suspension comfort well this mg5 alpha rides on a torsion beam a rear torsion beam so yeah if you go through uneven roads or some potholes it has a tendency of uh, hopping around you could feel that it has a budget set of mechanical bits, especially on the suspension side. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty much expected already, guys. I mean, we cannot really ask for much more than what this MG5 has to offer, especially for the price. So, yeah, it's just something that you'll need to expect uh, when you're driving over uneven roads or, let's say, potholes. Now, some of you will ask me in the comments if the MG5 Alpha can make its way up, let's say, a steep incline or let's say go up to mountain areas or mountain cities. Well, I do have a road here in front of me. I'll take you there. See, so you can see this is a pretty steep incline, guys. I do believe this probably around 15, 16 degrees and I'm at a standstill. So let's see if the MG5 Alpha can make it up. See? it easily goes up this uh, steep incline guys you see uh, as i mentioned it is one of the more uh, powerful vehicles in its segment so yes if you plan to take the mg5 alpha up let's say mountain cities like baguio then it's not going to be an issue at all 
Overall guys, in the week that I've been driving the MG5 Alpha, well, I love the fact that it's it's not small. You know, it doesn't feel small, it doesn't drive small. Uh, it feels like I am driving a compact sedan. So that also means that I'm not really bullied on the streets, especially if I'm yeah, if I'm sharing the road with big SUVs and uh, pickup trucks. Now it's uh the size of this thing is really closer to a compact sedan. So yeah, I guess size does matter, uh, especially in the in this subcompact sedan segment. The MG5 Alpha may be three years in the market already, but it has that drive character and that uh, specs and features that keeps it at pace with the rest of the newer competition. Now it's nice to see that MG has always been ahead of its time. So imagine uh, when MG Philippines finally decides to bring in the second generation MG5 into the country. Yeah? You know that car that looks like the kid of a Maserati and a Hyundai Elantra N? Yeah, that vehicle right there. I mean, guys, when that second generation MG5 makes its way to our shores, it's going to elevate the segment to a whole new level. But until then, thanks for watching.